I went skeet shooting not that long ago, and let me tell you, no skeets were harmed in that activity. Reason number one why I have so much respect for our guest today, Emma Lender. She skis blazing fast and then calms her heart rate and hits a target about the size of a pea. Unbelievable. We're going in here to get all the biathlon goods. Okay, so silly question. I mean, kids that are playing hockey, they look up to Connor McDavid or Sidney Crosby. For a young gun biathlete, who do they look up to? I guess in Canada, it would be like myself for women and then Scott and Christian Gao for the men, just being the, the old veterans on the team now. That's exciting. How and does that feel? It feels weird to say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but we... Like, even within our team, it's kind of a joke, like, I'm team mom or team grandma. Oh. Scott is the dad. How old are you? 30. Come on, you're not I a know. grandma. I know, but and and we used to have uh, older athletes, but in, in the past few years, you know, a lot of retirements. So then there's a huge gap for me. It's like six years to the next. Wow. So there's a feels I'm like am I old no I know and it happens overnight you're like I'm the rookie and then you're the veteran yeah who did you look up to growing up when I first got involved I didn't really know much about biathlon like I I was doing it from sea cadets which mm -hmm. is a totally different world yeah like how did what sea cadets is there skiing and shooting on a sailboat what <laughs> so uh in the cadet program they have different basically things that you can try. I had already kind of grown up cross-country skiing with my family, just recreationally. And my brother started doing biathlon and we picked him up from a practice one day. And the coach was like, hey, Emma, would you like to try shooting a hey, rifle? Hey, you could be good. Yeah, and you know, I shot a few shots and he kind of made a joke that I was already better than my brother. And I was like, well, now I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Like what, what helps you distinguish, okay, I want to do biathlon versus just cross country. Good question. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people kind of started out racing cross country and then transition over. Mm -hmm. I didn't race cross country. Um, I grew up in Northern Ontario <laughs> And I think my parents were like, we have to find something to do during the winters to yeah. get us out of the house. So we took it up as a family. And yeah, I I never never did anything competitive, really. Like it was all just fun, yeah. like skiing for fun, playing soccer, things like that. Um, but, but the shooting was this really interesting component. And th kind of in cadets, a lot of those athletes had never skied before. So I already had a little bit of an advantage just knowing how to cross-country ski. Um, and I had some success right away, which was pretty exciting. Like I'd never done anything and, and won a medal before. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, <laughs> I like this. And then basically, yeah, just kind of kept climbing the ranks in cadets. And then I finally got invited to do some uh, training camps and stuff with the BC team. Okay. And then basically made the full transition to just civilian biathlon civilian biathlon yeah. we just call it biathlon but in cadets you call it civilian biathlon um so I didn't know like I didn't know there was a world cup circuit I yeah. didn't know there were like national team athletes I was competitive enough um but then to see these older athletes and I was like hey who are these people hey <laughs> I want to compete with you yeah. yeah I think a lot of people um you know when they watch the Olympics though they're like that is such a cool sport but how do you get into it like do kids actually get into it or what is that age range look yeah. like I, I'm I'm assuming that we don't see five-year-olds just like shooting guns yeah and I would say there's seven of us on the national team right now and we probably got into it six different ways. Yeah. <laughs> like between eight and 10, you can do air rifle. That would be like joining the Canmore Nordic Club. You know, you're kind of learning to ski, learning to shoot a little bit. And then I think it's when you're 12 or 13, you can finally shoot 22s. And that's like fun. Yeah. It's way more fun yeah. to, shoot, to Kate, shoot a rifle. You've said that you love the shooting aspect. Like dive into the mental aspect of that, please. How do you make like a target that is really the size of like a poppy seed seem larger when your heart rate is probably 200. I'm assuming it's 200. Yeah. Well, 
I mean, so, so many years of just practice and training. Mm -hmm. Um, But even, even to this day, the mental aspect, it's huge. Like sometimes you feel just confident and good and you know, you're going to hit the target. (laughs) And sometimes you come in and you're like, have I ever shot before? Like being nervous or if there's really tricky conditions like wind um, or even just when it's really cold and your hands are cold, awful to be shooting with cold hands. So that d- definitely doesn't go away, the mental aspect. Um, and in the last few years, our team has done a really good job of, we have weekly meetings with our um, sports psychologist. And that's, n- I'd never had that before. Like we'd have one-on-ones, but to have this kind of team atmosphere where everyone's on the same page and like, yeah, sharing their goals and sharing their fears and, and someone else saying like, oh, I'm doubting my shooting and then, another athlete being like oh I feel the exact same way and this is kind of how I I overcome it um so obviously there's a lot of like physical training we do shooting training and then so many hours going into the mental side of things in the last few years do you doubt your shooting more than you doubt your skiing like what's more consistent Ooh. I, I said to Mark Renz, I was like, oh, were you good at Duck Hunter when you were a kid? Like, what? <laughs> it's a little asinine to say, but like, yeah, I mean, what what's more nerve wracking? I would say the shooting. Yeah. The skiing, it's, it's for sure you're going to have like days where you feel good and de- days where you feel bad. But you can always just push yourself as much as you can, I think, on the day. Whereas the shooting, it's like you can hit your first four shots and be kind of have it in your head like oh I'm doing really well you get excited you have a miss or you could miss your first shot and then you're like hesitating to take the next ones or you know in some of the races you have a really good idea what position you're in and you kind of know okay if I hit all five like this could be a podium and that just throws you off so hard because just the pressure mounts yeah and then you do weird things in the range like you're not relaxed is probably the main You, you end up you know your your mind's thinking about something it doesn't need to be when you're shooting what kind of athlete are you like how would you describe your preparation style um I would say I'm pretty serious <laughs> like I really feel that kind of since 2018 I didn't I didn't necessarily decide to do another four years but I was like okay the Olympics was awesome yeah and I want to see what else I can do yeah. and I felt like there was a bit of a shift where just everything, I feel like way more committed to biathlon. Like that is definitely the priority right now. And I would say having some of the younger guys on the team, it's really good because it keeps things fun. Yeah. Like they, you know, like Christian and I could just go for the same run every single day. It's 90 minutes from the house or whatever, two hours from the house. And they're like, okay, we're going to drive somewhere. And I'm like, okay, it takes an hour to drive there and yeah. an hour to drive back. Yeah, like, is yeah. this worth it? And then, like, this summer we ended up doing a really sweet run. And they didn't tell me what was going on. But all of a sudden we came to a lake that had – there was still snow from last year. And they're like, Emma, we're boot skiing into the lake. I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. Like, we're in the middle of a workout right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And we did. And it was awesome. you just having fun. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I would say, like, pretty serious and, like, just dedicated to getting the work done, but can still have fun with that, I guess. That's usually the quickest way to to win, at least in my own experience, usually when I was having the most fun. Yeah. I was like, oh, this hurts, but I'm yeah. enjoying it, you yes, know? Yeah, the enjoyment. I yeah. think that, I think maybe that's a better word even is that, like, I wouldn't keep doing this if I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. It's too hard. Well, you've certainly had like two, three amazing seasons. What do you attribute that to? Yeah. um, I think part of it for sure was going to the Olympics, seeing the Mm -hmm. level. And for me, that was such a cool experience. Like just making it there. That was the goal. It was like I got to the Olympics. Um, And then having, we've, we've had some changes in the coaching staff. Like, right after Pyeongchang, we got uh, this amazing shooting coach from Russia. Okay, cool. And before we didn't have that, we kind of had a men's coach and a women's coach. Whereas now we've transitioned to, like, a shooting-specific coach and then a skiing-specific coach. You get really, like, you can get more of an expert in their field when you do it that way. 
So that's, I think that's probably been huge for me. Are Russians like known for their shooting? I like that. I would not know that. They are a very strong biathlon nation. Cool. They do have some excellent shooters. Um, yeah, maybe, you know, they're one of the top five nations that competes mm. in biathlon and, and they always have good, good shooting percentages yeah. <laughs> and they're fast. And that was the big thing with Pavel was he, of course, he wants us to hit the targets, but he's been pushing our speed so much. And we've seen just on the res- results sheet, like y- you can kind of um, look at the analysis and it'll show you the shooting times. And consistently now we have Canadians like in the top five, which we'd never had before. That's very cool. Yeah. So how meticu- meticulous are you? I mean, we're a few uh, months out to Beijing. Are you thinking about February 2022, like every second of every day? Not so much. For sure, I'm thinking about the season. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think especially last year with how much uncertainty there was, like I was so happy when we were finally on the plane going to Europe and you know, the first few weekends, we didn't really know, like, if things were going to get shut down or whatever. And I just felt so grateful to be there and then raced really well. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, you know, there was a few weekends where I felt like almost I was trying to protect that and, like, tensed up a bit and then remembered, okay, that's not how I want to race. And, like, again, got back to the enjoyment. So I think this year... I don't even know the date of our Olympic races. You talk about, of course, last season, COVID-19, the sport was hit hard. Um, And I'm going to sound like a creep because I know one of your favorite quotes. He said, smooth seas does not make for a good sailor. What are some of the areas of adversity that you have faced that have made you a better sailor? And in this metaphor, let's talk about biathlon. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, I would say I've been pretty lucky in my career, honestly, and mm. and in sport. Um, it's just kind of, you know, I've had a few small injuries here and there. And that always, it's tough when it feels like training and racing kind of becomes your life as oh, yeah. soon as you can't. It's like, well, what the heck? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I really never had anything serious enough where it was like, you know, months off or anything. Um, but I think probably in the last few years, I've just had more, like something upper body, something lower body. And like, it feels like I haven't really just been like completely healthy. Um, So again, last season was amazing and like a huge step in the right direction. And I was really, really happy with how it went. But for sure, I think I almost have that question in the back of my head, like, how could this be going if I wasn't like rehabbing a shoulder injury if I wasn't putting all this energy into like finding specialists and physios and going doing all the rehab um so I think yeah probably probably just those like little niggling injuries your thumb I know so what's a thumb injury like aside from carpal tunnel or is it carpal tunnel I don't know (laughs) this was yeah this was years ago and I just fell while I was skiing and, and kind of tore a ligament in there. Mm. So for, I think that was 2015. Um, it was my, sh- it was my right hand, which is like the hand that's more important for shooting, yeah. of course. And right. Are you left-handed or what? No, no I'm right-handed. No. I wasn't doing a lot of writing, so I didn't <laughs> care about that. Um, but yeah, I had kind of this little custom made splint that, I brought my rifle into the hospital and they fit it so that I would be able to shoot with it on. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so luckily that one, as long as I don't fall on my thumb, it's fine. <laughs> well, what, how do you hold the hole then? Uh, the pole then? With it, Yeah, it was like, a, it was just around my thumb and then kind of my hand. And so it was enough space that I could get my ski pole into my hand normally. And it, it was like painful, but I was just happy to be able oh to ski. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you, you could shoot. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit clunky, but honestly, it was best case scenario. But it's kind of a common, like, ski- they call it skier's thumb. Like, what kind of uh, what kind of conditions are your favorite to ski in? Um, I would say I, it's, for just training, it's so nice to have, like, hard, firm, packed down tracks. Mm-hmm. But for racing, everyone can ski fast on that. 
So, so I you, prefer <laughs> I prefer a little bit softer and like a little bit more chewed up, which we get quite a bit in Europe. Um, it's warmer. Yeah, yeah, it's just warmer. Um, but that seems to throw a lot of people off their game too. Like they're like, oh, it's soft. It's yeah. not good. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. Isn't that funny how obsessed you get with like snow or yeah. ice, like wherever you're yeah, wherever, wherever you play. You are. Yeah. Is there a, like an ideal body type for biathlon? I would say not really. Cool. And, you know, if you watch a World Cup race, you see that. Like mm -hmm. the top of the podium could be like a six foot tall woman or five foot two. Yeah. Like you really see everything. I think just strictly cross country, there's maybe more like a more narrow of like the ideal or mm -hmm. what is perceived as the ideal. Um, but the shooting is such a huge piece in biathlon and it's like, you can just be a strong skier no matter what. Yeah. Like for your body type. Yeah. It's just like, power to yeah. weight. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, I, I've had teammates who were like six feet tall and they would destroy me in intervals <laughs> and I've had teammates that are my size and we're both, yeah. you know, super fast. So yeah, I, uh, you definitely see a, a pretty big range in biathlon. What are some of the more special races that you can remember? Um, for sure, the most like special feeling race format that I've done in recent years uh, is the single mixed relay. So that's just one, one woman and one man. Okay. And I never did it for years because I was my shooting just was not there. Mm. It's pretty shooting like heavy. Um, and a couple of years ago, I got to do the first one, like my first one, which was, I was, you know, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to be good at this. And I really, <laughs> really enjoyed it. Um, it's just fast paced and yeah, lots of shooting. And the last two years I've got to do pretty much every one with Christian, yeah, which has been so nice. Yeah. Um, because there's not a whole lot of relays where we would get to be together. Like there is a mixed relay, which is two men and two women, but you can kind of, I just never was on the, t like I wasn't the second woman, so I wasn't getting to do them ever. Yeah. So yeah, last or two seasons ago, we were having an amazing race and he, he like kind of tagged me for the last bit in like still within podium contention. Yeah. And we finished fourth. Um, <laughs> Which was like, it's so was, exciting, yeah. but it's all like, oh gosh, what could, yeah. And yeah, for sure. Part of it was a tactical error on my part in the skiing. Like I was just so excited and I kind of took the lead from the girl and then she, destroyed. she just drafted you or yeah, what? And then oh, destroyed me, <laughs> which I should have known. And Christian was on the sidelines telling me don't lead her, <laughs> but I couldn't hear it. Um, and we got to do it again last year at world championships together, uh, and had another like, you know, it's so nice when both of us can put a good race together on the same day. And then, yeah, probably my first top 10. Yeah, that's was pretty amazing. Yeah, it was just like, I, I didn't kind of go into this sport being like, I want to be an Olympic champion. I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm still enjoying it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing well. Um, so kind of, I guess, until I had a top 10, I maybe didn't think that I was capable of it yeah and then I was like well if I can get a top 10 what the heck what the Let's heck go just go yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only nine more positions to yeah, go up <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah probably my first top 10 um and then further back there was an IBU cup in Canmore and I was not doing super well that season and I wasn't that motivated and it was kind of around the time of my thumb and I thought oh maybe this is the last year and I'll, you know, go to school or yeah. kind of just make a change. And I got a podium at the Canmore IBU Cup. Do you think it was because you were like, meh, this might be it? I was my first time ever hitting 10 in a yeah. race. Like, and my mom was there and, you know, my club coaches and all the people who I kind of worked my way up through the system being a part of their team. So that, that was like a really, really uh, special one too. There is a lot of buzz around biathlon right now. I mean, we just talked to Becky Scott and I said, I'm connecting with Emma Lunder and her eyes just lit up and she's like, she's awesome. She's killing it. Da, 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 da. Like so excited. What is so special about this team? It's, it's hard to answer that honestly. Mm -hmm. Cause probably if you looked on paper, 
it'd be like, okay, yeah, you know, seven athletes, some from, some from BC, some from Alberta, some from the Yukon. But I think it's been, we've had a few years together now and it's just a very like-minded group, but also individual enough. Like everyone brings something a little bit different to the table, um, but we all just get along so well. Which is really, I think, rare. Usually it is you'd have, rare. You'd usually have a little bit of, like, conflict or just, you know, differences in personalities and everything. And we do have differences in personalities, but it seems to mesh. Yeah. And I think, I think it's been a big, um, kind of big push from the coaches and, and with our sports psych, too, just to see how important it is. Yes, we're an individual sport, but we're training together every single day. And we live together in Europe for four months of the year. <laughs> God. Like, you know, we go in November, we come back the end of March. And sometimes I'm like, okay, it'll be nice to have a break. And then I get home and I'm like, I miss my team. Yeah. You get home and you're like, I have to make my own food. Yeah, I know. It's the worst. Four months in Europe's long though. Do you guys just play a lot of Settlers of Catan or what do you do there? God, we usually, except last year, we, um, like it was pretty strict from the IBU, which is the like World yeah. Cup whatever and then we within Bathon Canada had kind of even stricter protocols so it was kind of like you you lived with your roommate basically and you sat with your roommate at meals there it was really you if know, you got through that with just one person for four months yeah you guys are close I know. and and at the end we you know once we were feeling like world champs had finished we played a bit more cards and things like that but we do we really like games stuff like that uh we'll go sledding like just yeah. doing normal people things in between the races <laughs> civilian things yeah, i like civilian. a civilian biathlete <laughs> yes uh you mentioned your your coaches and your sports psychs um justin wadsworth uh is a coach yeah he obviously had his moment in uh that was sochi yeah. Like, and yes. just guided with integrity, of course, married to Becky Scott, who has all the integrity in the world. Is that, is that a real value of this team? Yeah, I would say so. And I think maybe the, the biggest thing with Justin is he expects so much out of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he kind of expects this 24 hour, 24 hour athlete, but he also gives 110% every single day to the team. So it doesn't feel like that much, like when you have your coach and you feel that he's as committed as you are to the team's pursuit of excellence, it's kind of easy to like make the right decisions and do what you need to do. Um, and, and that's not, to, you know, we still have fun and he's, I was going to say 20, like, 24 hour athlete. That's tough though at times too. And yeah, maybe more just of like keeping in mind what the, the goals are. Yeah. And, and make it like, okay, should we go do some like dangerous mountain biking, like jumps, like the young guys on our team always yes. want to do boot skiing <laughs> yeah. into. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, yeah, I think, but then on our, like, you know, our rest weeks, he's like, take it off, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Like, don't worry about, don't fill in your training plan, like take a full break. Um, so yeah, I would say like, you know, we come to the training and everyone's ready to go and and prepared for the day and like that's every single day of training no one's ever late like it's just this it's a pretty nice culture to feel like everyone's respectful but also super super dedicated um but then to have the like downtime to you know recuperate you can have a beer and be normal yes okay yes. Phew. oh god yes phew <laughs> i gotta <laughs> look out be for the you first one to be like please <laughs> yeah <have> <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the goal for Beijing podium good for you yeah that's very exciting yeah it feels weird to say that and like I've told you know a few people the goal um but last year you know on the world cup there were a handful of opportunities where it could have been and of course you can always say that but you kind of know and you yeah know I just here. I'm like, okay, it is, it's possible. And in this sport, anything can happen. And no one's competed in Beijing before. It's a totally new venue. No one's had a chance to ski there. Like everyone's kind of going in blind, Yeah. but I like it. I like that. That's wonderful. 
smooth seas do not make for a good sailor. I'm super excited to to watch you do your thing in Beijing. Yeah, with our poles. With your poles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, peace. <laughs>